They say the first person to ever eat a soft-shell crab must have been very brave. Well, now that we know how good they are, you don't have to be brave, just hungry. We're down here in Calvert County to visit Patuxent River Seafood, a family-owned business who makes it their business to keep the soft shells coming. Waterman Jason Williams works year-round with his parents, his sister, and her husband fishing the bay and its tributaries. Today, he's invited me to tag along as he goes hunting for soft-shell crabs. Jason is looking for peelers, crabs that are just about to shed their old shells and emerge tender and soft-shelled. There's quite a few different ways to catch peelers. Um, I think I have a very unique way of doing it. His technique is to scour the sunken limbs of fallen trees, a favorite hangout for mating crabs. The creeks are the best chance for the crabs to go and find shelter when they're shedding. It gives them protection from bigger predators out in the river in the bay. So it works well for me with a smaller boat. I can find them in their habitat where they're about to do their thing. Jason relies on his uncanny eyesight to peer beneath the surface. I just kind of learn how to look for shapes and colors underwater, and in my brain it triggers, I should go back or I should try to catch that. I can usually discern by the color and the shape and the way the crab's sitting, whether it's a male or a female or a doubler or even a peeler or a soft crab. Al, right there, if you look on that branch in the water, he's sitting on top of it. You got him, wow. Jason looks especially hard for doublers or pairs of mating crabs that like to cling to the branches. We keep at it snagging crabs by ones and twos. Hunting them down isn't the easiest way to land a catch. Oh, no, it was a small guy. I like the hunt of each individual crab. I have to see it to catch it, versus having the crab come to me in a pot or maybe a trot line. There's one right there. Where? Oh, right in there, yeah. The hours go by and our baskets fill up. Time to head home and sort the catch. Back at the dock, we head straight for the molting tanks. I'm gonna call through them and separate them into be the rank tank and then the green tank. The rank crabs are just hours away from molting. The aggressive green crabs still have several days to go. They've got to be kept separate. Jason teaches me how to tell them apart. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at the difference. Like, this is just very pale, much darker. So this one's getting closer. This one's further along. This one's actually very far along. The molting process is nearly miraculous. The blue crab squeezes out of their old shell and emerges about one inch bigger all around. This exhausting process can take hours, especially if a crab's legs, claws, or back pins get stuck inside the old shell. You can almost sense their relief when they finally slip loose. At this point, the crab's new shell is extremely soft. It all requires constant vigilance. Unless the crabs are quickly harvested, their new shells will begin to harden underwater. Jason's family crowds around the tanks to check out what's going on. Despite the challenge of the work, Jason's dad, Stephen, loves it. Very satisfying to do this, to live off the bay, to work the bay and the river. And working with my family makes it that much better. And working as a family has its advantages. It's great. I love to see them getting up and being alongside of us every day. And, you know, if they can keep going, it shows me I can keep going. And that's not all. The best part of the soft shell business is eating them. And whipping up a mess of soft-shell crab sandwiches is a family specialty. It starts with Elaine cleaning the crabs and covering them with a specially seasoned breading. Then it's into the deep fryer under Stephen's watchful eye. Elaine, it's mighty nice of you all to put together this beautiful soft-shell crab sandwich for me to enjoy. And this is the Williams family secret recipe, correct? Yes, it is. And I understand there's a secret ingredient that makes it even better. That's our homegrown tomatoes in our own garden. 
and right here they are. They look like they're heirloom tomatoes. They are. Because I, I see a, a Cherokee purple right on top. This is These are beautiful. I'm going to have a bite of this, and I'm going to warn you, I'm going to eat the whole thing. So I want you to tell me what goes into the breading mix that you put on the crabs. I start with my seafood flour. I add my cornmeal. I add lemon pepper, my salt and pepper, and last but not least, my Old Bay. It's gorgeous, really, really nice. And it's amazing how good the tomato makes it taste. What I'd like to do is put the recipe for your breading on our website so people can try it at home. That'll be at mpt.org slash farm. For the local buy, I'm Al Spoiler. Joanne? To get the recipe featured in this video, click the link in the description. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss future stories. Thanks for watching Maryland Farm and Harvest.